Hello, and welcome to an episode of Mythic for Operators. Today, we're going to be looking at the general Mythic user interface. So whenever you first connect up, you're going to be using HTTPS and connect to port 7443, as you can see up here. Now, Mythic uses a self-signed certificate. So you, in whatever browser you're using, you have to click through that. Once you do that, you'll get through to this user interface. So this is the main login screen. The default username for Mythic is mythic underscore admin, and the default password is randomized. Now, if you want to be able to pull out this sort of information, we can go to where we have Mythic installed. In this case, we have Mythic installed on Kali Linux, and we can use the Mythic CLI binary to pull out various attributes. So we can use Mythic CLI config get and the thing that we're looking for. So in this case, the Mythic admin user and the Mythic admin password. Like I said, the default admin user is mythic underscore admin. If you want to change the default password instead of having it be randomized, then you can preset this in the .env config file or by using mythic CLI config set to whatever it is that you want. In this case, we set it to mythic underscore password. So let's go back to our user interface and log in. Once you log in, you are brought to whatever page you were visiting last in Mythic. So if you ever need to go back to the home page, you can click the hamburger icon up here at the top and click home. Here you can see a quick start guide for using Mythic and creating payloads, stuff like that. You can also see a quick overview of what payload types you have installed and what C2 profiles you have installed and which ones support which. So pretty handy overview there. Like I did before, this hamburger icon is a kind of global shortcut into whatever it is that you're trying to do within Mythic. So you can see the current Mythic version, the UI version, Mythic CLI also has its own version. Here under global configurations, we can see services. So these are the services that Mythic provides that are external to the Mythic server core. So we have Jupyter Notebooks to help with scripting, the GraphQL console helps with GraphQL and the main interaction between Mythic and scripting and pretty much everything with the main Mythic server. There's also consuming services. So these are your own self-installed logging and webhook containers. You can also click to create and create payloads and wrappers. We'll dive more into what these mean in future videos. Under operation config, you can see what payload types and C2 profiles you have installed. You can modify operations, edit browser scripts, all sorts of stuff. Now, if we keep going down in this list, we look at the operational data for the specific operation that you're in now. You can see what payloads you've created. And of course, you can search across a wide variety of things within Mythic. This one down here, clicking active callbacks, is probably where most people will spend a vast majority of their time actually interacting with the callbacks that you have from your various agents. The last thing, and probably the most important down here, is enable dark mode. At any point, you can just click and toggle this to enable dark mode for the Mythic UI. Now these buttons up here across the top are largely shortcuts to what we saw on that left-hand side. You can see your C2 profiles and payload types, see which ones are installed, if the containers are online or not, if the internal services are accepting connections, all sorts of stuff that we'll dive in later on as well. You can look into payloads and see what payloads you've created, when, their status, all that information. You can search across an operation and look at callbacks, tasks, credentials, everything that has happened so far in your operation is searchable and you can pull it out in a pretty easy to view way. Now, these other buttons up here at the top, files, artifacts, proxies, screenshots, and credentials are all just shortcuts to the corresponding tabs down here. So we have the files, credentials, artifacts, stuff like that. So nothing too crazy going down here. Like I said, active callbacks is where most people are gonna spend the vast majority of their time actually interacting with the various callbacks that you have. And we'll dive way more into this in additional videos for operators. Over here, we can see the reporting tab. This allows you to generate reports in either HTML or JSON format. And of course, if you want to include MITRE ATT&CK uh, mappings, you can click and toggle that here. Of course, if you're gonna have that sort of information, it's nice to be able to visualize it. So there is a MITRE ATT&CK tab that you can go through and view all the current MITRE ATT&CK tactics and techniques, as well as coming over here and seeing, you know, which ones you've already executed, which ones are possible to execute, all that sort of information. Last one over here, operation tags. You can go through and create your own tags. A Little bit more of a complicated topic we'll dive way more into later. 
Over here is looking at your current operation. So in this case, Operation Chimera. If you have a webhook container installed, you can use this button here to send support feedback. It allows you to just quickly capture things like bugs, confusing user interface. Um, if you have a comment or feedback or anything like that, you can easily type it up, hit submit, continue on your day and deal with it later. If you're ever curious about things, this little help icon will link to three different places within Mythic's internal documentation. That's this agent, wrapper, and C2 profile buttons. This last one, Mythic documentation, will actually take you external to the public Mythic documentation page. Over here, we can see the event feed. This is all sorts of notifications about what's going on within Mythic, who's logging in, any errors or things you need to address. Here it's saying that it can't contact certain containers. All this sort of stuff available for you, pretty easy to see. Last thing over here is your settings. You can view your own user settings, who you're logged in as, and of course, log out. So that's just a very quick high level overview of the Mythic interface. In future videos, we'll dive into each of these individual components more thoroughly and explain what's going on, why, how things work the way they do, and make things a bit easier for you to understand overall.